All right. Ooh, they're already. Oh, my. There are a lot of people. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Hey. Dude, are we more popular? 155, 166, yeah, 180. <laughs> oh, boy. There are a lot of people. Got people joining from Hello Italy. from Italy. What is up? Hello from Turkey. Amazing. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. The UK. See some Ghana. Buffalo. Say hi. What's up? Oh, oh wow. There's some there's some people from there's some people from China. Holy crap. That's awesome. Mexico City, Israel. This is amazing. Yeah, Mexico this is exactly. 378 people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do this. All right, I saw some SoCal up in there. Some SF. I'm in LA right now. That's yeah. And I'm from uh I'm streaming from Brooklyn, New York. Yeah. Brooklyn, England, got some New York in there. Cuban, Mississippi. <laughs> Somebody says New York. OMG, stay safe. <laughs> Someone in Shanghai. Rainy Los Angeles. That's where it's at right now. <laughs> oh, we got a cup of LA. Mm, Lock Jakarta. Iceland. Is this going to be on YouTube? Um, so mm, the answer is no, unfortunately. Um, I think we are recording though. So I think it's going to be available on YouTube after. Uh, for right now though, like live, it's just on Zoom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Can you switch between tracks? Yes, it's just links. So we'll, we'll send the links. How are we? How are you, Sonny? How are you feeling today? How am I doing? <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good. It's like a little bit chilly and cloudy outside, but I'm feeling pretty cozy. Where? Up in my apartment. Same, I feel like I've had enough time in quarantine to like get used to my setup here and actually feels like a little comfortable not like life in general is comfortable but just like i got a good setup um cool. should you give it a few more minutes maybe like two more minutes to get everyone yeah. logged in here and set up thanks for doing this in the lonely times yeah <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Should we get started? I think, I think. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so as you come in, let us know where you're from. Um, and yeah, we'll tell you what's going on over here. Cool. So uh, Sunny, do you wanna introduce yourself first? Yeah, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Sunny. I am a curriculum developer at Code Academy. Um, and a former CS, taught CS in the classroom in New York. Um, you might have seen some of my courses, including Learn C++, Learn SQL, Data Science Path, um, Learn Swift, Learn Hardware Programming with CircuitPython, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, I am Nick Duckweiler. I'm also a senior curriculum developer here. Um, I guess some of you have been here for like about the same time, like two, mm -hmm. two and a half oh, years yeah. or so. And um, yeah, so I'm in LA. I used to work in the office and now I'm remote, be back with family. Um, what else? Okay, I worked on, also we worked together on the analyze data with SQL. That's right. I did some work on the course, uh, sorry, the, the career path, uh, what was it? Code Foundations. Okay. I've done all of the Alexa stuff, <coughs> done the C Sharp stuff, um, I did the, JavaScript unit testing. Um, yeah. What was your favorite? <sighs> what was your favorite little thing, little project? Okay, okay. Oh, well, definitely the learn how to code stuff at the beginning of Code Foundations. If anyone takes Code Foundations, in the cool. first few lessons, they're all like interactive little games. That was fun. 
did it all with P5. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, okay. So let me talk about a little bit of like how this is gonna work today. So um, we uh, are gonna be, be hanging out for about 90 minutes. And what we're gonna do is first we're gonna talk about like what HTML is. Um, this is learn HTML, by the way. <laughs> um, so we're gonna show you a little bit of what that is um, on like our computers. And then we're gonna be doing a lesson. So we're gonna be doing learn HTML. Oh, Mike's in the room. Am Hello, I? Mike. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Just there to help uh, answer some some questions when they pop up. Don't don't mind me. Okay, cool. This is Mike, everyone. <laughs> um, so yeah, we just did introductions. So I said ninety minutes. We're going to talk about HTML, show you how it, like works a little bit in the browser, um, and then we're going to get into a lesson. It's one of our most popular lessons. Learn HTML, mm -hmm. um, and we're going to do the first lesson of the course. So if you're interested in making websites, if you just want to see kind of like how websites are built, or just get an introduction to programming, this is the place to be. Um, and then after that, we're gonna be doing a little project with Sunny. Sunny's gonna walk us through kind of like, once you know a little bit of HTML, you're gonna be making your own website. So within 90 minutes, our goal is to have you with some, with some kind of working website. Um, it might be like your favorite band, it might be like your own portfolio project. Um, we're gonna get you there. Anything else to add, Sunny? No, I think we're solid. Sweet. Okay, so um, let's hop into it. Let me show you what Learn HTML is all about. I'm going to share uh, my screen in a minute. But first, um, so learning so HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language, and um, the way I want to kind of like think about it. Hey, Santa Monica, what's up, Karen? And. Um, <laughs> So let me uh, share my screen here. I'm, I'm all over the place. Desktop to over here. Cool. All right, so this is my browser. Um, I can't see the chat at the moment, so just let, oh no, here it is. So yeah, if you can't see my browser, that's okay. So um, I'm working on Chrome, but if you have Safari, Internet Explorer, whatever, it's a browser. And it's just like any other app, it just reads files. And in, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to Code Academy Learn, and that's just the website. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna send me a text file and Chrome is gonna understand that language in the text and display a web page for me. <clears throat> so if you use like Word um, or you use like iTunes or whatever music player, you know that there are files like there's a .doc file and Word can read those .doc files. And there's MPG and like iTunes can read MPG files, but they're all just text. That's a, that's a spoiler today is that they're just text. And it's the same with HTML. Browsers know how to read HTML. So check it out. When I go to Code Academy Learn, just a website, my browser requests the HTML file, the HTML file that Code Academy has. It's sent over here to my computer and then it reads the HTML and shows me this page. So now I'm gonna show you what that text looks like, just that plain text. So if I go to right click, and you can do this on your own computer, most of them, if you just right click, inspect, you get this inspector, which is this cool like developer tools that we use a lot. Um, so the web page is up top here, and then you can see the code down here. This is the plain text file that my computer just got. And you can see even here, pro member corresponds to that pro member up there. So check it out. I'm just gonna change that. Let's say I'm a curriculum developer. Boom. So you can see I'm just changing the text file and it changes what's on the screen because the browser just knows how to read that. Um, let's do something else more fun. Let's check out this image, inspect. And let's see here. I have some links over here ready to go. Copy that go over here. So instead of my face, I can change, again, this is an image tag, and I'm just changing information in the HTML to redirect instead of to an image of me, to an image of donuts. So now I'm donuts, and I'm a C dev. 
Um, and there it is up there. That's just my web page now. So um, that's kind of just to get you started on the idea of like what we're going to be talking about today. And um, if you're curious, no, it's just on my computer. And if I reload, it goes away because the browser just accept, requests the new web page again. Um, I know. But today we're going to show you how to make that stick and how to make exactly what you want. So, um, yeah, Sonny, I want to hand it off to you to talk a little more about like the history, stuff like that. Cool, cool. And make sure to send out the link for the course just so people, um, just in case people. Yeah, want to I'll do that right now. Get situated. Um, yes. So while Nick is doing that, uh, I'm going to give you all a brief history of HTML and the creator. Um, so I actually remember walking into my first CS class in college and the, prof and the professor, when she talked about HTML briefly, she said something that really struck a chord with me over the years. She said, HTML powers the internet, okay? So to give you some history context, HTML was created by Sir Tim Berners-Lee, who is the inventor of the World Wide Web and the first browser. And I said Sir Tim Berners-Lee because he was actually knighted by the queen. Um, HTML was created in 1991, the year that I was born, but it was not released officially until uh, HTML 2.0, which was published in 1995, okay? And then comes HTML 4.01, which was a major success, widely popular. Um, and then comes HTML 5.0, which is what we currently use worldwide. 5.0 uh, HTML 5 is essentially an extension of HTML 4.01 and it was published in 2012, okay? But let's go back further and dig deeper into this story. There's something very cool here. Um, to the time when the World Wide Web was invented. So it all started actually with one single proposal. Um, in March, 1989, Tim Berners-Lee was working at CERN at the time. Um, if you don't know CERN, it's the European Organization for Nuclear Research in Geneva. It is one of the world's largest and most respected uh, scientific research centers. Um, my dad actually worked there and that's why my family moved to Europe when I was a kid. Um, but anyways, um, Berners-Lee um, basically distributed a document to his coworkers, to his colleagues in March, 1989. And the proposal name was Information Management, a proposal. Um, he, at the time, he basically knew that CERN had vast quantities of valuable information stored all over the place. And it would be really nice and really easy if they were all linked together, right? So he recommended creating a networked uh, hypertext system to manage all that knowledge in the database. Um, and here's a piece of story that I always liked. His boss at CERN took a look at that proposal and read through um, the proposal that basically described the early web and wrote back uh, vague, but exciting. Um, and I thought that's really cool because later on this proposal became probably one of the most revolutionary uh, inventions in the history of mankind, right? Um, it's able to make what we're doing right now possible, like video conferencing real time in real time for people around the world. Um, and that's also something I really like about this story is that um, a, lot of the, a lot of the times great things come from one idea and one individual. Um, a lot of times if you really believe in something, in the, especially if you're a programmer, I always tell my former students, just go and build it. Let the work speak for itself. Uh, you know, his boss might not have believed in it, but um, he basically gifted the world uh, one of the, probably one of the coolest thing ever, right? Um, and if Berners-Lee stopped right there, he would have already been, you know, very legendary status in my book, but he didn't. Uh, he basically later on became a champion of the web um, for, he basically fought for an internet that's free and open system and fair and uh, for everybody. Um, and I think there are only a handful of people for me when I think about, if I just think hard enough, um, that like makes me very emotional. And I think Tim Berners-Lee is one of those people. Um, 
And here's a quote that I found in the Times Magazine in 1999. So he said, so they said, um, Tim Berners-Lee wove the World Wide Web and created a mass medium for the 21st century. The World Wide Web is Berners-Lee's alone. He designed it, he loosed it on the world, and he, more than anyone else, has fought to keep it open, non-proprietary, and free. Cool, right? Cool dude. Yeah. Um, you should definitely check out some of his TED Talks, um, at least one of them, just to like get his idea. Um, and what's really special to me about um, building web dev path, like the web dev um, learning sequence, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, is that you're almost learning it from from like a, you're almost like learning it and watching the web evolve, right? HTML started for, HTML was like the skeleton. Then, you know, CSS came along a couple of years later and then JavaScript came along. So in this lesson, in this live stream, we're almost starting from the very beginning here. Um, and every time I write HTML, sometimes, you know, it's so simple, right? But, you know, sometimes I still think about like the story that, um, that like I, you know, just like fine throughout the years about Berners Lee. And it's just very cool to, to think about very Zen like um, that he was able to, you know, keep his, like not compromise his inter integrity and values. Um, he could easily have been a billionaire, um, but you know, he just really became a champion of this new, the modern web. Mm. Anyways, enough rambling from me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sometimes like when I think about this stuff, I get like pretty yeah into it. Uh, yeah. I'm going to turn it back to Nick so we can actually get started. <laughs> with this, uh, no, dude, that stuff is important. And it's crazy to think that it's like not that long ago. Not that long ago, right? This yeah. dude's still like rocking a nice suit sometimes. I see him like he's doing this new thing now, but called Solid. Uh, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude, still very young. Yeah. Um, so with that in mind, I'm going to explain a little bit more about like technical stuff, like how Zoom works, how this all works. And then I'm going to jump into the lesson because um, I was seeing just a few questions about that. Uh, so we are in Zoom and this is just like a room, but you can see the three of us, Mike, me and Sonny, and then all the guests. If you want to chat, you can chat. If you want to ask like an official question that'll stay up rather than like get pushed up in the chat, then you can just go to this Q&A at the bottom click that and then some of these are open some of these are answered we'll do our best to to keep up with those when we can um so just as a recap this is the learn html course um it's going to be about 90 minutes um and we're like 15 minutes in and uh the lesson that we're going to cover um i'll show you on my screen it kind of like exists a couple of places on our website right now so Bottom line is, if you need to find some links, am I sharing the right screen? I am so not. Okay, hold on. Okay, all right. Okay, here we go. Here's my password, here's my... <laughs> yeah, wait, what, am I sharing the right screen? Can you see my, is this, you can see the, the news.codecademy.com? Yeah, we can see, the, we can see the, the blog post. Cool, cool, okay. So this is, if you have any question about links, this is where you go. Um, news.codecademy.com slash learn from home day. So um, if you go down here, 1030, build websites, learn HTML, that's us. That's Sunny, that's Nick. Um, and you should be able to get through to there. And then um, if you want to get to the, let's see here, which one of these links will take you to? So this one, I'm just gonna walk through this to make sure everyone has the links. Okay, so it doesn't actually link you to the course. So the course where you wanna go, is here. Let me start here. Is this gonna work? No, so I need the, uh, the lesson name. Yeah, okay. I'm trying to think where the, I wanna show them the course Learn From Home conference. Oh, then you can just take out the lessons. So the slash lessons, take that part out too. Yeah, I think, oh wait, let me just double check because I think that Kenny gave us a link. Yeah, learn, learn HTML. I saw that. Um, there's another one that I wanted to show that is all, of, I want to basically give you all of the courses that are going to happen this week or today um, so that you have options. Oh, here it is, here it is, here it is. 
Yeah. Okay, check it out. So yes, we're gonna do learn HTML. Um, but if you go to this uh, slash learn slash learn from home conference, then uh, you have access to all the courses that are happening today. So this is going to go on for a while. And if you stay in this kind of like track, basically the next thing is HTML, CSS, JavaScript. We have some other people doing P5, Swift, and R today. Um, so if you go to learn HTML, we're going to be taking this lesson. And if you want, if you're really feeling it, you can take more, uh, a second lesson here. And then you can also take this project, which is normally paid, but it's free for today. So I'll put this in the link. This is where you go. That's for the, can you send the link? Can you send the link? Can you send the link? Okay. I sent, I sent the link. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> I wrote that in for loop. Yeah. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Let me get into it. Um, so, right. Go into here, learn HTML, interactive lesson, introduction to HTML. There it is. Thanks, Sam. Oh, Sam. Sam Sam's hopping in. Sam. Cool. All right. Um, let's get into it. I'm going to keep up my notes here so I don't forget anything. Uh, cool. Yeah, let me, um, yes. Okay, cool. So this is learn HTML and it's gonna, we're gonna go through like most of these exercises, um, not all of them. And we're gonna kind of like talk you through it. And this is go get me. So if you haven't taken a lesson before, that's okay. I'm gonna walk you through all of it. The way that it works is you have a narrative on the left with some checkpoints. And the idea is that we're gonna teach you something and then have you practice it. And then on the, middle in the middle here there's a code editor that's where you type your code and i can show you right here this says type your name in between the h1 tags then press run so let me refresh this to make sure i'm on the right situation here okay cool let's go down here h1 and then if i do nick d and i click run it's going to check my work and apparently i did it right so i get this green um question mark Okay, let's make this a little easier to read. Yeah. So then, wait, Nick, let's let's go over the I can I can do a little breakdown for, for people who never use CodeCamp before for like our learning environment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do so yeah. you want to take over? You want me to just show on my screen? Yeah, just share your screen. Cool. Um, so just for all the new people that never use CodeCamp before, um, on the left hand side we have the narrative um, that explains some information with uh, followed by one or more checkpoints on the bottom. And in the middle of the screen, that's something called the code editor. And when you type in the code, when you press run, if it's correct, the, the checkpoint will turn green. If it's not, it will turn red. And on the right hand side, we have the, uh, nope. the we have okay, the, yeah. uh, the output. Here. And in this case, it's a browser window. And some other cool neat features that you can check out is if you're stuck, you can click on the stuck get a hint um, part. Um, if you need to reference some information for previous Lessons, you can click on the cheat sheet link uh, after the checkpoint. And then on the very top of the co-editor, you'll see the file name. So in this case, it's index.html. Mm -hmm. This is for all the new, new, you know, new CodeCamp mites here. Yes. And then I want to show them the cheat sheet because, yeah. Yeah. The cheat this is there. pretty much, yeah. I want to study these babies. Different. Interesting. <laughs> Um, right. So this is what we're, this is all like the content we're going to cover today. Mm -hmm. Um, actually this one's nicely put together. So you can yeah, see wow. all the, all the, like, kind of like uh, the, the facts that we're going to cover today. Cool. 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 Let's go back. Okay. So, um, let's me zoom out for a minute here. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, let's start. So I'll zoom in again. So uh, what is HTML? First of all, welcome. And HTML is a skeleton of all web pages. So like Sunny said, um, this is what the internet is built on. And it stands for hypertext markup language. You don't have to memorize that. Um, and essentially it's, you know, the language in every file that a browser gets to show some web page. Um, do, 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 do. and this is just HTML, which is like the skeleton. But if you want to put on clothes and make your website dance, 
then you're going to need CSS and JavaScript. And those are coming up after this lesson. So stick around for those. Um, cool. So we saw our first example of this. This is an HTML file. And whatever I type in here is going to show up on the right. So that's right there. Um, I can put anything in here. Like last time, I was putting curriculum developer. I can run that. Boom, there it is. OK, that's just to show you how it works. Now let's get into the anatomy of an HTML element. So everything in HTML is this like the atomic piece of HTML is an element. So every web page is built up of a bunch of elements. And this is one element shown right here. So there's an opening tag. It's got these angle brackets. There's some kind of content and then a closing tag. And it's got the angle, angle brackets and the slash. This particular one is a, a P tag. So this could say anything. In the past, it said H1. It could say div, whatever. It's, this is the important part. And then the content inside. So this is what you're going to see on the screen. Hello world. Um, and just to be clear, the whole thing is the element. The red parts are the tag. And the inside is the content. So when we use those words, just so you know what we're talking about, that's what's going on. Um, yeah, let's keep going. So let's get into one of our first elements. It's called the body element. And um, you can see that it has these angle brackets like before. And instead of P, it's body. Um, yeah, I did that in a class once. Someone told me to do that for like a, uh, like pose for a photo like that. I was doing this and they're like, no, I'm up here. Okay, um, cool. So body tags. So first, let me show you uh, what it looks like. Add a body to your web page using the body element. Body. Okay, quick run. Just make sure I did this right. Yes. Okay, now add the following code between your opening and closing body tags. So that means here are my tags. Between those, let's add some content. P, life's very short. And what we have to do must be done in the app. Okay. And, oh, and I forgot my closing tag. There we go, and run it. There it is. Now it shows up in our browser. OK, so now we've seen two elements. We've seen the body and the P, which stands for paragraph. OK. Um, yeah, and Sunny, feel free to jump in whenever you see that I'm, I'm missing something. Cool. All right. OK, so you saw a P element within a body element. And the way that it works in HTML is that everything's nested. You know how in like, if you're doing like a research paper or an essay, you have like the full essay, and then you have separate paragraphs. And then within the paragraphs are sentences. Then within the sentences are words. It's going to be the same in HTML, except it's like a body. And then there's paragraphs, or like headers and paragraphs. And then we're going to get deeper and deeper in. So this first example, the paragraph is within the body. And we use like a family tree kind of vibe. So the body is the parent element. And the paragraph, this P, is the child element. And you can say that the P is nested inside the body. And usually we like to put these spaces here just to make it clear. So like every time you go one layer deeper, you add two spaces um, to indent it. And you'll see once we get into more code, it's going to help to have it nice and tidy. OK, so check it out. As another example, here's the body. And it has one child, which is the div. And then that has two children, h1 and p. And you could say that h1 and p are children of the div, and that's children of the body. OK, so um, let's add a paragraph below. Um, as a child of the div. So if it's a child, it's going to be in between the two right here. I'm going to make sure that I indent properly. I'll do that here, this paragraph. I can't spell. I'm going to copy it because I'm a mess today. 
All right. Cool. Check that I did that. Yeah. Um, cool. Okay, so so far we've seen bodies, key elements, and nesting. The H1 and the div you haven't seen yet, and we're about to cover that. Um, but they're all elements. Okay, so yeah, that's nesting. Let's um, get into learning some actual elements now. So headings. You notice in this web page, our Code Academy web page, there's this kind of like bold, bigger font up here, and it says headings. So that's a that's a, a heading itself, and um, that is a type of element. So when, like I said, when your browser gets the HTML file, it knows how to interpret it. It knows how to read it. And when it sees those H1, H2, H3, which I'll teach you in a minute, it knows to make them bigger and bold. So um, example, in newspapers, large headings are typically used to capture a reader's attention. Other times headings are used to describe content, like the title of a movie, educational article. HTML is the same way, and there's six of these headings. So you're gonna use these for like titling um, mostly. And they go from bigger to smaller. So H1, the biggest. Then H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, each of those get smaller. Um, so right now you can see this example gave us, let's see here, H1, H2, and H3. So you can see that H1 is the biggest brown bear. H2 is a little bit smaller, and H3 is even a little bit smaller. Okay. So what are we doing here? Below the H3 heading that says features, add an H2, this is habitat. Um, just a quick question about H6, yeah, that's the lowest. It's just one through six. Um, okay, so here's habitat. It's a little bit bigger than H3 because it's an H2. Then below that, it's asking me to put H3 countries with Large round bear. Yeah, yeah. So this one is going to be a little bit smaller than habitat because it's an H3. And then let's do one more. I'm just going to copy here to make it faster. This wants me to say countries with small. So basically, within habitat, there are going to be countries with large brown and then countries with small brown. There we go. Finally, make another heading that's a H2 heading that says media. So now on the same level as about brown bears and habitat, there's also gonna be a media section. H2 media. Run it. Cool. So those are headers. I like to see all of them at once, just so you can really get a feel for it. Check this out. Uh, do, 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 do. Three, four, five, six, six. Three. Okay. Um, check this out. So over here on the right, I just add a little of my own content. It just says media three, four, five, five times with H. Well, why don't we just go through it all the way? H one says the same thing, but you can see that the size is different. So H one's the biggest here, and it gets smaller, 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 smaller until you get to H six. Cool. So um, those are headings, one through six. Um, one is biggest, six is smallest. Moving on. Okay, so I saw a couple of questions about divs, and these are divs. It stands for division, and um, basically it allows you to group your elements into meaningful sections. So right now I have all these H1s, H2s, H3s swimming around everywhere. I want it to be represented in my code a little bit better. Um, so I'm going to use divisions just to kind of separate it out. So below the H1 that says brown bear, add an opening div tag. So here we go, div. And then place it, place the closing tag after H3 that says features. Div. Okay, and because now these are nested, they're like inside, um, I'm going to push them in, two spaces. And I want to give myself a little more space here visually. Check that I did that right. Um, 
then add another one above h2, and then after brown bear. And then, like I said, they're nested, so I gotta push them in, indent them. Cool. And then finally, wrap it, another one around, what does it say? Yeah, around media. So div, div, push that back. Okay, so like I said before, there's like the about brand bear section, there's the habitat section, and the media section. So I'm using divs to separate them, and now it's nice and tidy. I can use white space, whatever I want. Div here, div here, and div, div here. Okay, um, so little side note here. Um, we teach you divs, but there's a lot of other grouping elements. So section um, is another one, uh, and article is another one. I think there's another one. Aside is, is another one. Um, but we're just gonna teach you div because that's the general one. And as you get more and more into HTML, you'll see when to use section and article and stuff, but div is just um, the basic one to get started. Okay, so uh, Dina D. Maria says, should you uniquely name the div to easily reuse? Um, yeah, in fact, that perfectly leads me into my next exercise, attributes. Um, so within an element, you can add extra information. Um, those are called attributes, and there's a name and a value. Um, so one of those is ID. So here's an example. You have the div, and now it has this attribute. Name is ID, value is intro. And ID is just like, like you said, to make a, something, like give a unique name to each of these divs. You're not gonna see anything changing on the right side in the browser. Um, but this makes it easier for one, us to read the code, and two, later on, when we get into styling, um, these divs and these IDs are gonna help us add styling to our elements in like groups. So you can say like, this div and all of its children make it look green. This next div and all of its children make it bold or whatever, rather than having to say like, a paragraph, a paragraph, a paragraph, heading, 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 make those bold. Um, okay, so I'll show you some examples. First one is introduction. Right, that's below, the, yeah. Okay, then this next one is supposed to be habitat. Then finally, this next div is, so the point is for this one that attributes exist, you can add them to all elements and each elements have like slightly different um, options for what the attributes are, but they're extra information. So um, we're about halfway through the lesson. Let me pause for two seconds um, for just to make sure that I'm answering people's questions and that the Q and A isn't going on um, unloved. So Zoom uh, Q and A. What else is going on over here? So we're on the first lesson of learn HTML. Mm -hmm. um, and you can use the link up here. Let me zoom in for a minute. Can I do this? Make it bigger? No. Um, okay. And then we're on the seventh exercise here. So if you ever get lost, you can just check out the bottom left here. It'll tell you what exercise we are in the lesson. Um, cool. So. Um, have some questions about Code Academy versus formal courses. We have some questions about forum, a discount. Okay, discount's an easy one I can answer. Um, we are currently running a scholarship um, for uh, students who are affected by um, the COVID nineteen pandemic. And, and if you have been like laid off and it's, you're not in school, um, that is something that we're working on right now and should be releasing soon. And that's gonna be a way to, to help you out. I can't like 
say much more than that, but yes, there's, there's something coming and you'll, if you follow along with Code Academy, just check us out on Twitter. Um, you'll be able to hear when that stuff is going. Okay. Um, and yeah, so this Code Academy course, you can do this on your own whenever you want, but we're, you know, doing it all together today. Um, scholarship for teachers. So yes, if you have an EDU or K-12 address, you can um, just search for Code Academy Scholarship. You'll be able to find it. Um, and if that doesn't, yeah, so that, that you should be able to do that. Um, yeah, so just make sure that when you get the scholarship that you have EDU or a K-12 or a, I guess, student address. And if you are having issues, then you can contact our customer service. They can help you out here. Um, okay, it seems like I'm going a little fast. I have a tendency to do that. Question about divs. Slow down. Yes. Okay. I'm going to slow down. <laughs> okay. So, so Benjamin Oxley asked, do you have any personal HTML project we could see for an and product reference? So mm -hmm. I think after the stream, uh, we can post the, the code on GitHub. So we'll send out a link and you can all check it out. Yeah. Whether, whether we built a BAM page together or whether we build a portfolio page together. Yeah. Okay. So let me get back to recapping. Um, so we talked about HTML and what it's used for. I gave you an example with the inspector. You saw that it's just a file. Browser knows how to interpret it and knows how to make it look for the user, for us. Okay. We saw elements. So HTML is made up of these elements and all of them you're going to see angle brackets, content, angle brackets. Okay. Next. Um, one of them, one of those elements that we saw is body. And I saw a couple questions about why body. Um, that one, the browser, like I said, needs to understand the HTML. And um, every browser is a little different. And so it interprets the HTML a little differently. But one thing that we can be sure of is that it understands body and it knows that body, everything inside body, is what needs to be shown to the user. So that's something that we don't really see like on the right side uh, in the display, but it helps our browsers figure out what to display. So that's body. Um, okay. Then uh, we also talked about like nesting. So remember, we have this body inside there. There's an H1. So the H1 is a child of body. There's also a div. The div is a child of the body element. And then this P tag, this P element is a child of the div. Um, okay, I'll get to divs in a second. Uh, but first with these H's, those are headings and they just tell the browser to format things a little differently. Give them their own line, make them bold, make them a little bigger than um, paragraphs. And uh, each one, so I did this little example down here. You can see what they look like. Same word, but over here, H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6. This is what they look like. Um, so those are those. And then we talked about divs, which are just another element. DIV, and they're good for grouping things, keeping things ordered. It stands for division. And when we get into styling with CSS and interaction with JavaScript, it's going to make it a lot easier for us to like add features. Um, and then finally, attributes, which are pieces of information that you can add to each element. Um, for example, ID, which is like a unique identifier. You can add that to our divs, and it's just um, a little equation here just says ID is the name of the attribute, habitat's the value. Um, yeah, and we'll get into more of those. Cool. So I've been talking about CSS and JavaScript a little bit. Um, if you want to make uh, like a website like Codecademy over here, you'll need to know HTML and CSS and JavaScript. Uh, right now we're focusing, taking them one at a time. HTML is all about the content, the skeleton. Um, and then if you stick around after this, we'll get into CSS. If you stick around after that, we'll get into JavaScript.
So we're going to cover all of those today. All right, how are we doing on time? It's 11, 15, and we have 45 minutes. Okay, so I want to get this done in like 15 minutes and give Sonny some time for his project. Cool, 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 cool. All right, so we talked about paragraphs. I'm going to skip this one for now. Um, I guess I should allow, I'm just, for a matter of time, I'm not going to cover divs. I will talk about M and strong. So M and strong. If you want to make things italic and bold, then you're going to use strong and M. So check this out. The Nile River, the Nile River is the longest river in the world. So if you want this bold, you're going to wrap your text in strong. If you're going to do italics, you're going to wrap it in M. So M is emphasis. Um, that's what it stands for, and it's the italics. So let's show an example here. This Ursus arctos is like a species, like a scientific thing. So we should make it italics, because that's what you do for Latin names. So remember, italics is emphasis. So M, M, there it is. Now it's, um, it's bigger. Yeah, you can see it's italics. Then what are we supposed to do next? Let me just run this to make sure I'm doing things right. All oh, right, I guess. Duh. Oh, then um, brown bears. About brown bears. Least concern should be strong. Should be aka bold. So that's right here. Least concern. Let's see if that works. Yeah, bold. Okay, um, and then there's also line breaks. So these look a little different. They're just a, just a starting tag, just BR, like that. And if you wanna do some cool like poetry or haiku, haikus, you wanna break up your paragraph, that's what you use, these BRs. So for example, if I wanted to put a break after least concern, you could do BR, BR, and it's just um, a line break, run it. And you can see now this is pushed down a little bit. So let me do that one more time. If I delete this, you should see there jump back up to least concern. There it is. One more time. ER, ER. Separate. Cool. And Wait, Nick, yeah. one, one question about that. So yeah. why do we need break elements? Can't, can't you just add, you know, two enter, you know, two new lines after? Wow. Okay. Good question. Thank you, Sonny. Yeah. So um, remember we said browsers interpret the HTML file and there's a certain way that they know how to read HTML. Turns out the browsers don't care about white space. I can just go like this. I can just do as much as I want. Browser doesn't care. It's going to look the same. So we need to be specific. We need to tell it like, Hey, actually in the display, not in this white space stuff, actually for users, show them a line break. So you need to be specific and say BR. So then that will make white space, but Everything here, like within the actual code, it's not like a Word doc. It doesn't, um, white space is essentially ignored. In fact, if I really want to make this ugly and I don't recommend this, you could just like put everything on the same line and it would still work. Nothing changes. The browser knows how to read that. Cool. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, and Bernard asked, why two BRs and not a P? So, uh, yeah, so the question is, I'm pretty sure what Bernard is asking is, I added two BRs here. Why not just make this a new paragraph? And I agree, you could do the exact same thing by essentially deleting this, ending the first paragraph, and starting the new paragraph. Looks the same. Um, <clears throat> so this is just an example to show you breaks. I agree that another paragraph makes more sense here. Let me show you a realistic example. Say after features, I wanted like more space. I want to make it clear that habitat is separate. Um, so I'll find where species is, which is, okay, I made a mess here. <clears throat> so 
So habit before habitat, I want to add some more line breaks. So that's right here, br, br, and you'll see habitat come down a little bit. Ah, now we have things nice and spaced out. So there's like a more realistic example of um, line breaks. Okay, um, we're gonna cover a few more tags. So you've seen headings, those look bold, those are bigger. You've seen paragraphs, those are like the regular text. How do you make bullet points? How do you make numbered lists? Um, the unordered list is bullet points. And the way it looks is UL stands for unordered and LI stands for list item. <clears throat> and the way it works is you have this UL and then within there you put the bullets that you want. So this code is gonna look like this output. Let me show you an example. I'm the heading that says species, create an unordered list like this. Remember, we need those list items. So it's not gonna actually look like anything yet. Okay, then add the list items in there. Great. So within here, I have Arctos actors. Arctos. I also need Polaris. I'm just gonna run this so you can see it. All right, so we're starting to get some bullet points here. And then quick guys are angry because I haven't finished it. So let's add hori 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 horribilis. Am I saying that right? And then finally for um no Sony. Thanks. Oh, oh, I did do arc or toast. Okay. Arc, uh, okay. There we go. Cool. Moving on. So I showed you bullets, which are unordered lists. Now I'm going to show you numbered lists. Those are like ordered lists. So instead of UL, you use OL. And again, you just have the list items in there. So this is the code example, and this is what it looks like. So if you're using numbers, if things are like actually need to be in order, like this recipe, then uh, use an ordered list. If they're not, like this Arctos over here, um, then you use unordered list, UL. So let me show you this OL. Um, under the heading that says countries with large brown, yeah, add an ordered list. And then tag. All right, so we're gonna be adding stuff under here. You're not gonna say anything yet because I haven't had any of the settings. Um, Let's add some now. Russia has large brown bears. United States, the states, and Canada. They all got them big old bears. Okay, so here we got the numbers. Um, Real quick, I saw a question from Lisa. I'm gonna say tags and elements. <clears throat> what I should be really saying is that is tags are the stuff in here. So for example, this OL, that like text is a tag, an opening tag, and this slash OL is the closing tag. The whole thing altogether is called an element. Mm -hmm. Okay. And a lot of the times I feel like even in tech, even like on Kogami's engineering team, when people talk about tags and elements, they kind of use them interchangeably. Mm -mm. But like strictly speaking, like in a more correct sense, element is the opening tag, the content, and an optional closing tag. Yes, thank you. Okay, so we've had text all day. Let's make, let's put in some images. Um, and they're called an IMG. Um, Programmers don't like to type that much, they're lazy. So when we can take out um, letters, we do. And you just, we just, you get used to it. IMG is image. Um, and notice that this one's a little different. There's no closing tag. It's called self-closing tag. So essentially you start with the image, you have some attributes and then slash closing tag, slash angle bracket which like closes itself. So you don't need um, anything else to make an image. And then the one attribute that you need is source, SRC. 
Um, and then the value is whatever the file name is. Um, cool. So we have given you a image here. I can actually go directly to this. Give a spoiler. It's a brown bear. That's just an image online. You can all can get there. But I want to put it inside my web page. So with under media, what I need is an image. Okay. So there's the tag, which represents the element. Um, there's just one tag for the element this time, but it needs this source attribute with the value of being that URL. And we got a bear. Um, next. Okay, image alts. <clears throat> so another part about being a developer, you have to think about everyone using your product. There's gonna be a lot of people using your website across the whole internet. And some people will have a slow internet connection. Um, or some people have problems seen. Um, so you give some text to the image that describes it. So if you can't see it or you can't load it. Um, also, if we make a mistake and put the wrong source name, um, the text will show up. Okay. So, oh, also it helps with SEO, search engine optimization. Basically helps you get higher in the list on Google. Okay, um, da -da -da -da. so let's add an alt. So basically you just have to describe it. Uh, this is a, a large brown bear, as I understand it. Check it out. Here it is again. So if you want to like see this as an example, I'm just going to make a mistake and break my <clears throat> link to, oh, it's a grizzly. Word. Okay. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Harris. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. So if I break the link, it's going to show me the alt text instead of the image. This is just a way to test that you wrote your right alt text. Here we go. The grizzly bear. So even if the image doesn't show up, we at least understand what's supposed to be there. <clears throat> Let me fix this. And you'd also, and this would also kind of what be would present as if you we're doing a screen reader, say if you couldn't see very well and you needed the computer to read it out loud. So there it is. Okay. Almost there. I've got two minutes and I'm handing it over to Sonny. Can we do um, that? Last thing is videos. Right? Is that the last thing? Yeah. Um, we saw images. Now let's get into videos. Same thing, um, except was with the source. But now we have three more attributes with height controls. Also, image was like a self-closing tag. It just had that slash angle bracket at the end. This one actually has um, both an opening and closing tag. Okay, so let's add a video down here. So this is kind of the architecture here. Just opening and closing tag video. Yeah, opening and closing video. And you want to put um, this source in there. So source equals that. And run that. OK, we've got an image going here. There's the video. I can't play it yet. Um, and it also is not the right height or width. So I keep adding some attributes here. The width with the 320. And the height. So these are pixel sizes. Oh my God, what did I just do? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Run it. Okay, so now we're starting to get the proper size. Finally, wait, what did I do wrong here? Find the width of the video is 320 and the height is 240. Oh, I also need controls. There we go. Okay, now I got controls, so I can start playing this. This is cute bear. All right, cool. And then finally, like I said, with the images, it should be um, sensitive to people that can't read it properly. This also helps with SEO. And also, if you break the video link, you still have a description here. And this says, video not supported. This is just pretty general text. But, um, I don't placeholder. There it is. Okay. By the way, controls was what enabled these buttons down here. So if I delete this, run it again, no controls, I can't play it. 
add back controls, run it. Got these guys here. All right, congratulations, everyone. Um, thank you for making it through that slog with me. <clears throat> you now know some HTML. And um, Sunny is going to show you uh, what you can do with it now. So I'll pass it over to Sunny. Cool. Thanks, Nick. Um, so before we get started with this portion of the stream, um, we can do either two things. We can either build a band page to, together, like your favorite band page together, or we could build your personal portfolio page. So spam in chat, press one for band and press two for band portfolio page. Yeah. Good luck reading that dude. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm seeing a lot of twos. So portfolio page. He's a gamer, so he can read things a lot faster than I can. Okay. Get that, you know. <laughs> cool. Should I share my screen? Go for it. Okay, so we have 30 minutes. Let's see if I can blaze through this. Um, actually, let's do another thing. Should we, um, let me know, because I can't see the chat anymore. Um, mm -hmm. Should we go through, do this locally on your own platform? Like show you how to use VS Code? Or do you want to do this in the review exercise? Uh, like here. Are we asking me or are you asking? asking uh, I mean, yeah, both you and the uh, <laughs> I can't see the chat right now. People but. are loving VS Code and local right now. VS Code local? Oh, dude, they're loving it. VS Code? Are we they're doing it in 30 VS minutes? Code. Yeah. All right, let's do it. <laughs> what I've been trained no. for the last few years. Let's go. OK. so. We're going to do this locally on your personal computer. Um, so I'm going to send out this link in the chat right now. So I'm going to explain what VS Code is, but go here and download it. You can download this whether you're using Mac OS, you're using Linux or Windows, it should work. Great question from Tam Tamay Aurora. So VS Code is a co-editor developed by Microsoft. Um, it includes so right now we're doing everything on the CodeCamp environment, but usually you do this off platform on your own personal computer. So CodeEditor is where you type your HTML code. Um, just to note, um, there is something called Visual Studio, VS Code stands for Visual Studio Code. Um, but there's actually Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio is an IDE, which stands for Integrated Environment, Integrated Development Environment. Okay, it's like the full suite. And uh, Visual Studio, Visual Stu VS Code, Visual Studio Code, on the other hand, is just a co-editor, but it supports uh, debugging, it supports Git control, it supports GitHub, it supports uh, syntax highlighting. See how, you know how on this webpage there are a lot of nice uh, looking colors. Um, that is all because of syntax highlighting. And according to Stack Overflow's 2019 de developer survey, uh, VS Code was the most popular one. I used to use Atom and I switched over to VS Code. So make sure you download that. Same. And let's show you, give you some basics of it. So I have it right here. Pop it open. Cool. And there are two, two ways. So this is Visual Studio Code. So there are two ways to open a new file. One is you click on this link right here, new file, or you can click on file, this little file tab, and then new file. So I'm going to click that. And here we have a blank file where you can type your HTML code. Um, also give you some more uh, basics. So on the left-hand side here is a an explorer or a file navigation system. Here is a search button where you can search for keywords in your, uh, in your code base. This is a little version control system, a um, little debugger and extensions. So we actually have a CodeCami syntax theme. So if you just search here, CodeCami slash uh, dash syntax dash theme, you can actually get the color theme from the um, from the CodeCamp environment. So you just click install here from the market, marketplace and then set color theme. So I'm going to set it right here. So boom, it looks a little bit different. It looks a lot famil familiar. Uh, so I'm going to do, did that work? Let's see, new file. That did not work. You can also do this right here. So color theme, code color syntax, boom. Now we have a nice little file. So to do this uh, locally on your computer, here's what I suggest. Um, I'm gonna create a new folder in my desktop. 
and I'm going to call it stream. Okay. Um, and I'm going to go into this file explorer. I'm going to open the folder of the stream, so desktop stream folder. I'm going to click open. It's going to reload. And now we have a stream folder right here. As you can see, it's a toggle. It's like a little toggle. Uh, and I'm going to do a new file. Okay. And I'm going to just type in H1 Sunny Lee. I'm gonna close it. And I'm going to save it by using the short, uh, the, the short key command, Command S. Okay. I'm going to store it inside the stream. But make sure to save it as something.html. So index, I'm going to call this file index.html. Okay, I'm going to save it. Because I give it a file extension of .html, um, as you can see, the color has changed. Now VS Code recognizes as a HTML file. So when I click on the in stream uh, folder and I double click the index.html file, you can see we have a little web page on your computer. Here's the file path. Cool. A bit slower, please. I'm sorry. Let's go a little slower. Feel free to type in the chat. Any questions? I can see the chat now. And then also reminder, if you want to just practice, you can still build HTML on that last review exercise. Um, Sonny is showing you the souped up version where he's doing it locally on his own computer with uh, his own text editor. Yeah. Okay. So I have a new folder called stream, you know, stands for the stream. And then, um, can you repeat that method to start VS Code? I just click on the, after you download it, you should have the application locally on your computer. Cool. Um, what do you do, so Rema asked, Rima asked, what do you do with a new folder? So I'm gonna keep all my files for this web page, for this portfolio page on this, in this folder called screen. Okay. So let's get started. There are going to be a few things that might go over that um, that are not part of the, the lesson, but um, it'll be part of lesson two in the intro introduction to HTML, but it's still okay. So there's something called a doc type, which stands for document uh, type declaration. And every web page actually should have this. And there's another element called HTML element. And all of our code will go inside here. Okay, and an opening tag and a closing tag. And then there's, we learned about the body tag, the body element, sorry. This is where all the code that would be written that would be displayed on the web page. So let me just type my name one more time, uh, Sunny Lee. Every time you make a change to the code, you need to save it. So either file save or command S. And then refresh the web page. So I have this web page open. Actually, I do not, so I'm gonna double click right here. I have the web page open right now, I need to refresh it. So anytime you make a change, so let's, let's, let's take out my last name, hit, hit save, refresh, and the page is updated. Cool. So let's go. Um, there's something called the, we have the body tag, the, the body element, but there's something called the head element. This is where you display the meta information about your web page. So let me just type in some meta information. This stuff, Sunny Lee's web site. I'm gonna save it, refresh it, and all this does is see this little tab right here in this browser. It changed to Sunny Lee's website, and that's what this does. Okay, and I'm gonna leave this here for now. This is called like boilerplate code. Um, Adia asked how you add your theme again. So this is a CodeCami syntax, the open source code cami syntax theme. I'm going to send you a link right here. It's open sourced on code cami's GitHub account, um, created by one of our former engineers, John Sam. So shout out John. Cool. Let's continue. Um, so when we design, when we try to build a web page for, you know, a portfolio web page, before we get started, we usually need to like think about what we want to have in this page, right? And Usually I try to have, you know, whiteboard it out or, you know, draw it out on a, on a, on a piece of paper. But here, let's just do three parts. Let's do a, a section called about me. 
Let's do a section called work and let's do a section called social media. Okay. So let's create a heading one and let's call it Sunny Lee's webpage. Website. And then here's a little, really cool thing that we can do. It's called a marquee element. It's a really fun one. And let's do the content inside. Let's put welcome. Save it, refresh. And here we have a nice little heading and a little you know, text that's like come across the screen. Okay. Cool. And now let's create three different sections. One called about me or introduction, whatever you want. One called work with a list of stuff that I worked on and then one called social media. So let's do H2 um, about me. I'm gonna copy and paste this. So command C for, and command P and let's do work. And then let's do social media. So under about me, let's write something about yourself. So I'm gonna have a paragraph tag. And I'm gonna say, I am a curriculum developer at CodeCamme and a former CS lecturer. Boom. Save. Refresh. And now we have three headings and a little paragraph. Good. So in the work section, let's create maybe, let's create maybe two different things. One for, for projects and maybe one for writing. I do a lot of writing on the side. So let's do an H3 element. So heading three um, with the content work. And let's copy and paste this on the bottom. Let's do one for writing. Okay. And then let's create two bullet point lists in these two. Okay. To list out all the different work that we've done and all the writings that you've done. So under the writing, let's do unordered list UL element. And inside, let's make uh, for myself, I'm going to make two lists elements. LI stands for list, UL stands for unordered list. Okay. For this one, um, I'm going to do one of the blog posts I did for uh, COVID-19. So it's called Dear Students, Dear Teachers, Students, and Parents. And the other one is an interview I did with Bjarni Strasha, the creator of C++. C++. So I'm going to do interview with Bjarni Strelstra, um, the creator of C++. Let's refresh this and boom, we have a bullet point list. Cool. And then maybe work, let's do another bullet point list and let's do um, some cool stuff that I built at CodeCamme. So maybe the Instagram filter. CodeCamme has an Instagram IG filter that you should check out. Then uh, recently CodeCamme cheat sheets. Version 1.0. Okay, it just came out of beta. So let's refresh right here. Oh, instead of work, let's actually do projects. So there's two work here. I think this this will look nice. Cool. And then um, this looks kind of boring right now um, with just text. So let's add an image. Underneath social media, let's add an image element. So IMG stands for image, and we're going to do source, and the path name. Um, I have an image that I'm going to use. Uh, let's see, where are you? Okay, I have an image right here called sunnyboy.gif. It's a GIF file. And I'm going to put that image inside the stream folder. Okay, so these two are in the same file now. 
uh, same folder now on the computer, on my computer. So inside here, instead of putting a URL, I am going to put something called the relative path. Usually with URLs, you have www. You know, kokami.com slash sunnyboy.gif, right? But what happens when we put the same uh, image file in the same folder with the HTML file that we're writing in? We can actually use something called relative path with dot slash and the file name, sunnyboy.gif. I'm going to close the image tag, save it, refresh it. Whoops, spell source wrong, SRC wrong, save it again, refresh it, and hey, there's a GIF underneath. Hey, there he is. Cool. So Sonny, um, I just want to make sure that everyone has a little bit of a break before the next session. Okay. So maybe like around 11.55, we do a little stretch break. Okay. Recap. How's that sound? Cool. Cool, cool. Okay, I'm sorry, it's maybe too quick. So let me just show you the screen real quick. Um, the code real quick. So it's not too bad. So all we're writing is this. Cool. The only thing I think we didn't talk about in Nick's session is this part. That's just some code that you can include. Okay, so you don't have, you can ignore this part. And also the marquee element, actually, we didn't talk about it. Okay. And to recap, you, where are these files on your computer? So this is in a desk, on my desktop, in a folder called stream. I just named, I just create this cool. uh, little folder called stream with an index.html file and an image inside. Cool. And okay. then you're editing the HTML file here? Yes. In cool. the VF here. And then could you show them one more time how to open that file on the browser? In the browser? Okay. So to open this file in VS Code, we right click it and click open with VS Code, Visual Studio Code, to see the code itself. If we want to see what it looks like on the web page, you just double click it. Sweet. Okay. Let's add a little bit more information on here just to make it more fun. Um, let's have a uh, another list called maybe interests. So I'm going to have something called H3 element called maybe interests. So let's do two interests with a couple. I like the video game Dota 2. I like VR. I like music. Save it, refresh it, and now you see some interest. Okay, and we also forgot to add in social media links. So I'm going to go back to the web page. I'm going to copy and paste another bullet point list. Okay, and let's do some uh, some self plug right here. Let's do Twitter at Sunny Num Num, and let's do GitHub at Sunny Num Num. Save it, refresh it, and then boom, we have this. And let's customize style a little bit more. Let's use a strong tag to make the Twitter and the GitHub bold. I'm gonna add the strong opening tag around the word Twitter and another strong opening tag and closing tag around the world, around the word GitHub. Save it, refresh it, as you can see, these two turn bold. Okay. And then let's actually add links. So this is something we have five minutes. Let's actually do this um, so that to make this page more uh, interconnected to other pages. Um, suppose we want to add a link to another page. Um, I'm going to type this in chat right now. It's something called an anchor tag. And it's with the letter A. Okay. But that's not all. So anchor tag, there's something afterwards, um, uh, an attribute that says href, which is similar to uh, 
the source attribute part of image. So it's href and an URL inside. Okay, and this opens uh, the link, the content to another page. So let's do this right here. I'm gonna add an anchor tag, A. I'm gonna add a closing anchor tag. Okay, remember there is some, an attribute called href. Hyperlink reference, and I'm gonna add a link right here. The blog post linked. Side, okay. This is just a URL for the blog post. So now when I save it, refresh it, you'll see that this actually turned into a link that you can, you can click on. I'm gonna click right here and it takes you to the blog post that I wrote, okay? Can y'all see? So, anchor tag with an attribute called href and the attribute value is wrapped in double quotes the URL of whatever we want the page to link out to. Cool. And I have another one right here. I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna make this link out to the interview that I did with Yarny Brasha. So here's a link, new link. I'm gonna replace this URL. Delete it, paste it in a new URL. This closing tag should actually go here. Okay, I'm gonna save it. Let's go to this web page, refresh it, and let's try it out. Boom, it goes to the interview. Okay. But right now, the when, when I click, click on the link, it links out to um, the other page in the window itself. A lot of the times, we actually want to open the link in a new window. So this is how we do it. We add another attribute inside the anchor tag called target equals, and the value is underscore blank. Okay, this stuff you'll learn later on. Um, it looks might look kind of crazy right now, but it's actually not. Um, so later on in the introduction to HTML course, you can check it out. So now when I refresh the page, I click the link, it actually opens up in another window. So I still have the old page right here. Very neat. Okay. Thank you. And then let's do the same thing for the social media. So let's make the word at Sunny Num Num a link. So I'm gonna do an anchor tag, a href with the link https colon slash slash www.twitter.com slash Sunny Num Num. Close it with a uh, double quote. And then let's Close the anchor tag, anchor. And then here, remember, we want to open up in a new window and we do target equals underscore blank. Save it, refresh it. And now when I click on this link right here, it should take me to my Twitter account. Cool. Oh, I have notifications. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna copy and paste in, this in for my GitHub page. So instead of Twitter.com, it will be github.com slash sunny number. And this anchor, this closing tag should not be here. It should be right here. Save it, refresh it. And now this is also a link. Cool. Um, and then what else should we do? Please slow down, please, please, please. I'm sorry. We're, we, we ran a little bit out of time, so yeah, I had to like- That's a little bit my bad. I, I went over a little bit. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Um, but, I'm sorry. Um, hmm. <laughs> Somebody said, do Facebook? No, I'm not giving out my Facebook page. <laughs> Make Facebook, <laughs> do Facebook. Um, let's see. So let me take a look at the web page real quick. Looks pretty neat. It's a good start. In the next lesson, uh, next breakout session, you'll learn something called CSS. And that's where uh, you'll learn how to style this, make this more pretty. Maybe add a background color, change the font, and so on. Okay? Yeah. 
and then um, cool. Yeah, I think this should be posted on YouTube. I'm not 100% yeah. sure. Um, so please check back on the YouTube page maybe in a week. Um, if not, um, it'll be emailed actually. The, cool. the recording, Mike told me that the recording is going to be ready next week. <clears throat> and then you'll all get, if you registered, of course, everyone did here, you'll get an email and it'll send you right to this recording. So if you didn't catch everything, that's okay. You'll have a chance to redo it um, on the recording. And then of course, follow along with um, Learn HTML on the on our site. Mike, did you have some, something to add? Yeah, just want to add, uh, we should be, the recording should be out Tuesday. Just need a couple days to get everything together, but um, we'll email everybody who attended. Yeah. And if you didn't quite get to making VS Code or um, adding this on your own uh, locally on your own computer, that's okay. You got to see at least like a real developer in action and seeing what like kind of the workflow looks like overall and, um, and what's possible. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to, I can post this. So check out my GitHub page, maybe later today, I'll post the code there. You'll see it should be a new repo. Um, just in so case no, no. we have three more minutes. So please ask us any questions before we. Yeah. Call it. Thanks. Thanks. Thank, thank you for, for watching. Yeah, uh, thanks all. Yeah. I mean, we're, it's a, it's definitely an interesting time for 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 the whole world yeah um you know everything's kind of on pause right now nobody really knows where everything is heading to so i mean things like this make me have something to look forward to so we're in the same situations as everybody watching right we're all stuck in our homes um i think it's a great time to like reset to pick up coding um if you weren't you know, if you if you're like a workaholic and you want to take a break, I think this is a great time to take a break. If you you know feeling like you want to you know get started with you know some things, this is also a great time to do so too. Yeah, and really sorry again for for blazing through the the project. Um, wish we had a little bit more time, um, but oh well. So yeah, if you stick around in the next two minutes. Give yourself a little stretch break, a little pat in the back for getting through this first 90 minutes. And um, Mike is going to share a link to, or you know what? You can just access it. I'm going to post it on the, right now on the um, chat. Here goes, there it is, that news.codeacademy link. And you can find everything that's going on. And like Sunny said, if you want to start styling it, you want more than just black and white text and you want some colors or cool fonts, that's, you're going to want to go to CSS. And that is with who's Kyla? Kyla, mm -hmm. Kyla and Kenny, I think. Um, yeah. Um, and then Nick, do you want to give out your Twitter too? So that just in case people have questions after the stream, feel yeah. free to message us. Yeah, so I'll just post it. It's just N Duckweiler, like my first initial and last. N Duckweiler on Twitter. And also, I'll just put yours here, Sunny Nam Nam, on Twitter and GitHub. I think I spelled it right. Yep. Sunny, no, no. Yeah. Sunny, no. Yeah. So you can find that's that's both for both of us. That's Twitter and GitHub. Yeah. Oh man, I just got to follow Cheatsy seventy six. Instant. Shout out. <laughs> Twenty new followers. I'm just kidding. Oh my god, are you serious? No, 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 no. <laughs> Uh, Sunny's way pop, way more popular on Twitter. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm just starting, but um, yeah. If, if you're interested in stream, I'm also doing some private streams, um, personal on my personal channel every Tuesday and Thursday. Go over HTML, CSS, and JavaScript uh, in a more like slower pace. So just some self shameless promotion. Uh, Yeah, thank you so much, by the way, for, 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 for joining. I'm pretty surprised how many people stayed yeah. for a 90 minute session, right? Yeah, uh, we had over 400 people watching yeah. this. Um, so I used to teach coding in the classroom and you know, around like 45 minutes walk, there's always some student that's just like pick up his back, pick up their backpack and just like walk out. Uh, so this is cool. Oh, thank you. What? It's so nice. <laughs>
list of all um, Aw, thanks everyone. Oh yeah, what's your channel name, Sonny? Oh, what's my channel name? I gotta, I gotta post it on here. Get that on there. Yeah, twitch.tv twitch slash Sonny Num Num. Oh wait, am I not doing this? Wait, let me do all attendees. Okay, that's my Twitch. I just post in the chat, twitch.tv slash Sonny Num Num. I just started this uh, streaming two days like uh, on Tuesday. Um, so I'm going to do every live stream, every stream on Tuesday and Thursday at 3 p.m. Yes. Tuesday and Thursday at 3 p.m. So I already started HTML. Um, on next Tuesday, I'm going to go over HTML tables. And each session is about 60 minutes. Yes, Eastern time. How do we add the code camera syntax theme? Great question. So if you click on to the VS code, there are a couple ways to do this. You can click this little gear right here and click extensions and search for code cami dash syntax dash theme. And then you click install and then you click set color theme. Okay, another way to do this is just click right here. This little extension uh, in the, uh, this little menu. Cool, yeah, CSS has started, so make sure to jump over to that breakout room if that's what you're interested in. Um, Nick, do you have the link to? Yeah, so you just go down to register for that 12 o'clock build, learn CSS. Yeah, the website's learn CSS must speak English. Yeah, so you can just find it in there. Okay. Cool, everybody, and also check out these Zoom backgrounds. <laughs> yeah, you should download this. Check out the CodeCami Twitter. Uh, account, you should find them. Uh, I really like this one. Right bugs. Hopefully, if I'm on Nick's left. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to my Zoom? Where did my Zoom go? Oh, am I here? I don't understand Zoom anymore. Cool, cool, cool. So, yeah, we're happy to hang out for a minute, but if you do want to learn CSS, that is starting right now. And just go to that link that I posted. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna keep spamming this link. Where'd it go? Back here, back here. Cool. Cool, everybody. Yeah, wow. sad to see the numbers go down. That was that was a special moment right here. I think Coach, yeah. I don't think Coach Cammy has ever done this, uh, especially to this like to this scale. Um, so yeah. this is definitely um, awesome. Yeah, yeah, this was really great. And also, I'm working on a top secret VR course, Coach Cammy VR course. Oh yeah, definitely follow Sunny for that. It's gonna be dope. It'll come out in a couple months, but. Cool, cool, cool. See you, everybody. See Have fun. You everybody. Good luck today. By Lewis, by Carly, by Spencer. <laughs> Start reading out every single name. <laughs> Yaxela, Martin, amazing. Okay, so Sunny, I actually have to go to another work meeting. Okay. Um, are you gonna stick around, or I guess uh, people? I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it too. Yeah, I think people are heading out anyways. Yeah, don't want to yeah. people here, um, especially there are other sessions going on. Right. Remember our cool other cool coworkers doing uh, presentations. Yeah, we don't want to steal their time. So head over I think there. I learned Swift too, if 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 you want to. Oh, we're Swift. Yeah, Sunny's been on that too. Yeah. That was uh, that was like a couple months long project. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's really dope. Learn Swift. That should be another session. I don't know what the time the time. I think it's is. happening now also. Okay. Yeah. Sure. On the CSS track, I guess. Oh, Early. Like, you know, still a hundred people in this chat. Why are there a hundred people in this chat? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Kicking you out. <laughs> cool. Where do I click? Oh, where do I click? Oh, maybe they're waiting for this one. No, so it's not in this room, everybody. Yeah. Okay.
Yeah. So just find CSS in there. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Good luck, Louise. Later. See you, everybody. Be safe. Cool. Cool. All right. I guess that's it. That was fun. Yeah. yeah. We killed it. Oh, yeah. Uh. See you next week, dude. Yeah. I'll chat to you soon. <clears throat> CSS. See you, everybody. Cool. All right, y'all. It's time for me to head out. Enjoy the day. Thanks for joining.